Hi, my name is Dan Graverson and I'm the creator of PI Migration. In this video, I'll show you how you can do testing in migration projects on SAP PI. So the background, uh, over the last year, I've been working on moving away from a SAP Business Connector to a SAP uh, PI system. And in this process, I've learned tremendous amount about projects and testing and everything. And I've learned quite a bit about what you can do to do a lot of the migration testing even better and why that is such an essential part of any uh, migration projects. So the, the challenge you probably have is you have one platform, uh, web methods, uh, whatever, IBM web, or well, WebSphere, uh, BizTalk, uh, PI, uh, or XI, or uh, Business Connector. There's a lot of different platforms and you may want to, to move away from one of those to PI, or for that matter, a new platform. A lot of the, the things you need to do is the same. You need to be sure you're testing for whatever instance uh, idea that is relevant for what you want. And once you go live, you want to have the minimal impact as uh, have an, a, a minimal impact on the pr whole process that you're in fact uh, inserting or changing. So the partners you're communicating with, the systems won't see that you have changed the the platform in between, they will just continue as normal and really don't care about what you're doing. And that's essentially what you want them to. Not noticing what go goes on, but just maybe inform them, but it shouldn't affect them. They should just be continuous sending their that EDI documents as, as normal without any changes. So you want to minimize the impact and you don't want to go contact all vendors say, well, we just have this extra field we want to put in and can you do this by Monday and we'll be happy. That doesn't work. And if you have a lot of vendors or customers, it's not possible to change any of this uh, without having a big project around it. And that will be a whole separate project to do changing and say, okay, we have the solution, we're just going to trash and then build a new one for the new vendors. That's a large investment, both on the business side, for the vendors, customers, and everybody involved. So you want to minimize the impact as, as much as possible. So one of the, the good things about this is you can read the source code of the mapping. Uh, in Business Connector, which I've been using, you, you can drill, can you drill down and find what's being done in all areas and with all instances of the mapping. The challenge is you may not always be able to do, to fully understand what's doing being done. Some of the mapping, some of the, the code that's being put in there may not actually be used anymore. And you can end up doing a lot of work and make your mapping much more complicated to support an issue that's no longer in the used. And well, something you need to at least be aware of that you cannot see all of these changes and understand them. Um, one of the, the challenges I've read was, well, I can read it and I can understand it and use it for a lot of what I want to be doing. But it's not possible to do all the things that are, or understand what's going on and how is this file going to be processed when put into this one. Uh, so this is essentially you you may have not, not a lot of in and ins and outs on the platform that's doing specific things to just help get everything a bit better and make sure that it works as you expect. And it's difficult to find all these uh, assumptions that has been made. Uh, does this only occur if this item has been filled in or 
what happens in these instances. So the normal project step for, for this uh, or the plan for, for such a, a project where you want to mi migrate from one integration broker to another is something like scope the project, which is what are the number of users or what are the, the type of interfaces we need to move? Is it vendors, is customers? Is it just a specific part of the subset of the customers or vendors? We want to, to move a specific direction and what's going on, what's, what's the whole purpose behind this. Then you, you have broken down and find it's these 500 mappings or 10 mappings you want to do. And then you just start mapping, take one document and just do the mapping as you would expect it to do. Um, Obviously, this would be the first draft of the, the, the mapping and there's a lot of chance that it will not work because you're just guessing a lot of the times. So you'll find next up is you'll find some, some test files and test out how these things are working, what's being used, how can we use this uh, for a, an even better approach well you'll find the test files uh, from as many vendors as many different options and settings and whatever you have uh, used and it may be a good idea to to notice some of these things and in, in when you're doing the mapping okay we we need to have someone where for instance in ddi we have an rff segment with with a certain qualifier or something like that because if we have that, then it triggers a whole subset of everything going on and that will affect what we're doing here. And you need just to notice, write them down and say, okay, this is what's going on. If we, we need to find some, some tests for this. Next up is you do some, you perform the test and you test a lot of documents with, with different uh, ideas and, and you'd see, okay, in this instance, we are doing it in this way or we are getting these responses or it works like this. And that's really a useful way to, to look at it and then be sure you know what's going on. Next is to update uh, the mapping because, well, Obviously, you'd get some feedback from, from these uh, performing, performing all these tests and you'd say, okay, there's something I forgot here, I need to implement that. And there's something new and there's something else. And all those things add up and you can get much better with, with your mapping. And then you would expand, expand the number of test files and compare with even more test files just to make sure you didn't forget anything or something hasn't changed that really wasn't that useful and then you move into QA and into production and start using it and at that point you would hopefully just say it'll be easy and there would be no support and you just sit back and enjoy the time for doing a go live well I, I, I wish that's probably not always the case or any any time the case that you would be able to test as much as there won't be any changes when you're doing go live i would probably argue if if that's the case you have been spending too much time on the project uh, to to make sure everything works and it, it may be a waste to spend that much time on 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 the full project um, so one of the things that I found is the more test cases you can do, the better. And the more thorough you, you believe in the ability of, of the mapping to perform what was expected of it. So you need to find a, a low cost way, fast way to do all the testing that is required for you to make sure the, the solution is absolutely perfect so there's some different comparison options that i'll go through and then 
talk about how you can use these to, to leverage in your project and make sure that they all work uh, accordingly. So the first one, well, I'm assuming you're sending in IDOCs um, and that's a lot of EDI integration, a lot of other areas where you do have the, the EDI files and you can use comparison on them. If you're using IFCs, it's a bit more difficult because, well, it's a binary format that no one really can can see. They can just see the resulting mapping. And then you'd have to do a comparison by the documents. Uh, but that's not in the scope of this. This is just, well, you do, you send in a document on the test system and using v05 you would find that document and then you may look in onto the production system and find the same document with the same reference and you'd go through all the segments and see are there any changes between these two documents are there any way we can do a testing to make sure well what are the difference between them? Are everything correct that's a partner correct is all the fields filled in correctly and if they are you're happy and there's not a lot of other things you need to do in that perspective the the challenge is this is really labor intense and requires a lot of time and well on the current project just before go live we're, we're doing a lot of these tests and it's it's helpful it gives a lot of insight on what's going on and have we found all the different areas that we need to focus on and we can see this is what the document looked like in production and there may be changes in the way their platform works or whatever and then this tool really is useful but it requires a lot of time to go through all segments and make sure they are equal um it's it's challenging and when you have read through 500 segments, probably you won't do that. Uh, a third testing, you'd mo mostly see, okay, we have the, the first and the second or and the last line is okay. But if the, all the other lines, you won't go check them because you assume they're the same. Otherwise, that's really a lot of testing and you'd just be poof. All the, you cannot focus on anything in in your head. I've experienced that, so you will uh, may lose some different uh, I, insights in what's going on here. The next one is to compare XML or EDI files or whatever you're using. Uh, save the original file from the production system and then try to send uh, the same IDOC or the same document through the new solution and test how those things work uh, using Elspire. It has a really good uh, diff tool that can show you these are the, the differences between these documents and it's, it's helpful because it's easier to see where the differences are and what you need to do about them. Whereas if, if you look in, in the IDAC monitor, you can just see, okay, these are the two documents we have and you have to find them the changes yourself. Um, so it's easy to show up uh, the difference between two files. The setup of this process is a bit complicated and you need to do a lot of manual work Every time you need to find the, uh, the, the two XML documents, save them and open XML by compare them and see that everything is supposedly okay or not. And do a bit of adjusting because not all of it is supposed to be the same. So in that perspective, it requires some setting up to, to get used to. I used both of these methods and I found that I it wasn't really sufficient. So I built my own tool for, for comparison where I could compare documents sent in through the PI solution 
and simultaneously I could process them through Business Connector Saver on the same PI server and then I could just compare the two XML documents to two EDI file or whatever to make sure that they were as identical as possible. Uh, obviously not all files can be identical because the, sometime you'd put in a timestamp or whatever and those wouldn't be well, if it's processed at the same time, Business Connector as at the PI, it should be fairly simple, uh, identical. But if it's you're comparing with the original document, it's not that. Well, they would be different. So that's why the solution makes it a bit easier to compare. A lot of documents you can compare all the documents at this one time and just process them uh, much faster. Uh, so it is taking the best from, from both the, the document world and from the XML comparison world and making it much faster to, to do all the comparison. Um, so one of my, my key takeaways from this uh, Business Connector my migration project is do perform a lot of tests. Uh, the more comprehensive you can do uh, and comparison of document the better and the easier it is for you to find where do my mapping differ from the original mapping how can you do anything uh, in regards to this do read the mapping because that will give you a lot of easy ways to figure out how you can fill in information and the last part is find all these exception cases you have where you're filling in some data because you want to do something and someone has put in a business rule that the discount is there or whatever. Notice all those so when you're finding test cases you can go search the, the documents for those specific information and make sure all of those test cases are covered. So uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So happy migration. I hope that this helped you um, with getting even better at what you're doing with your migration. And if the PI migration is something that can help you, go give it a try. There's a free trial on using that uh, pimigration.com. And I'm really looking forward to, to hear what you're doing to become better at your migration projects. So thanks for listening and happy migration.